Hello and welcome back to Friday Minis. Remember the good old days of trigonometry? Well, today let's just bring programming and trigonometry together for a brief moment to take a look at a function which, well, its use may not be immediately intuitive. Today we're concerned with the arctangent function. In particular, in many programming languages, you have a function called a tan2. Now, what's with the 2, right? What happens in the first one? So, in order to understand this, we're going to have to, well, just take a quick look at the math side of things. Don't worry, I'll make this quick. You know how in a right-angled triangle, you can take the tangent of, well, one of the internal angles. And that value is equivalent to the ratio between the lengths of the opposite and adjacent edges. This, of course, makes up one of our most classic equations. But here's the deal, what if you only know the opposite side of things? Let's say you only know the ratio and you're trying to find the angle. Well, no problem, right? We can always do the inverse tangent, also known as the arc tangent of the ratio. And that will give you back the angle. Now, that is all well and good. In fact, in the context of a right angle triangle, that's basically the end of the story. But here's the deal. When we're writing programs, it's not necessarily so. You see, if you're writing, say, a game or a drawing program or anything that deals with coordinates, what we may have to do is that, given motion in x and y directions, so yeah, horizontal and vertical motions, we want to figure out the angle in which that is actually going. This angle is sometimes also known as a heading. And the idea is that this could happen in any compass direction, right? Depending on whether your x and y values are positive or negative, you can essentially move, well, anywhere in an entire circle. And finding the heading is usually expressed as an angle in terms of one of the axes. So what we can do is again, we can try and use the same approach. Given the two lengths, we can find their ratio and we can use the arctangent function to, well, figure out the angle, right? Except you'll find that there is one little problem. You see, the issue here is that the directionality is actually lost when you do things this way. You can find out the angle, but this angle isn't within the range of an entire circle. And the reason for this will be apparent if you see how the ratios actually, well, figure themselves out. There is actually ambiguity thanks to the division step. The two negative signs may or may not cancel out. That, ladies and gentlemen, is why we use a 10 2 That version takes in two parameters. Instead of pre-calculating the ratio, it will calculate the ratio for you, but at the same time, it can tell whether each one of these numbers are positive or negative. And as a result of this, your programming language can figure out the actual correct angle, the actual correct heading in which this motion is actually going in. You are in fact giving your programming language more information because, well, if you do the division yourself, you are discarding some information about, you know, whether these numbers are positive or negative. That is why we have a 10 2 and in fact, anytime you're trying to do something that is essentially an inverse tangent, you will probably be better off using the a tan2 function instead of using, well, the normal arctangents. That's all there is for this episode of Friday Minis. I hope you've gained some insight today. But until next time, you're watching 0612TV with nerdfirst.net. Thank you very much for watching. If you like my work and are feeling generous, you can shoot me a one-time donation on PayPal or sign up for a recurring one on Patreon. Of course, you can simply like, comment, and subscribe. You know the deal. For more videos, links to my channel and a related playlist are on screen. Thank you for your support.